sister were hanging out in Brooklyn, having a grand old time, seeing the sights. Uh, you know, went to a basketball game, had some pizza. One of the things we did is we went to the Coffee and Tea Festival at the Brooklyn Expo Center. Really neat, lots of different vendors, different teas and coffees and treats. Really cool stuff. Now they did have some weird stuff. Um, they had mushroom coffee, which, hey, if you are what you eat, I'm not a fun guy. Not a big fan of the mushrooms is what I'm saying. So I didn't try the mushroom coffee and they had lemon coffee and you know, of course everybody had nitro brew, cold brew coffee and all that kind of stuff. But as I was sitting there sniffing this mushroom coffee and thinking, uh, nope, there's no way, nope, not gonna happen. Started chatting with this guy and he was a local coffee shop guy. And he said, listen, there is this pop-up just for Expo, just around the corner, I think it was on Banker Street in Red Hook. I don't know Brooklyn that well. It was around there. I've got a photo. This was taken kind of beside it. After the expo, we checked this place out, this little coffee pop-up. And uh, you get there, and yeah, it looks like a, just like a deserted building. But he said, like, just go through what looks like the main door. It is the main door. There's no signage, cash only. And we get in there, and yeah, sure enough, they've got some, uh, some pit lights set up in this big empty warehouse space. I mean, it was way too cool for me. I shouldn't have been there. Um, so we go in, and they've got these spotlights set up and in the middle you know they've just got a DJ playing very softly so as not to alert anybody walking by and they've got a barista and the barista is making he's got he's got his beans he's got some spices and he's got a blender and he's making fried chicken coffee I know you're looking at me thinking Sure. It sounds so weird, but the place smelled amazing. Like you would not believe this. You walked in and you get this smell of fried chicken and fresh coffee. It just gets your mouth watering. So we got in and uh, I was like, okay, let's give it a chance. And once they explained it to me, it made a lot more sense. At one point, everybody was big up on bulletproof coffee, right? Bulletproof was the big cool thing. Everybody loved their bulletproof coffee. And there were two main components to bulletproof coffee, right? One was uh, the, the essential fats that you blend in um, to help keep you full and give you energy and all that kind of stuff. And the other was the coffee. Now the guy who developed the bulletproof coffee said that he had a proprietary method of removing, I think they're mycotoxins. I might have got that word wrong. I'm just going by what the guy told me. So basically these toxins are like a little type of mold and they grow on all kinds of food, including coffee. Uh, the bulletproof guys say that it's those tiny amounts of toxins aren't enough to kill you, but they definitely make you sluggish throughout the day. There's a problem there. So they developed this process to remove those toxins from coffee that you then mix in with the fats and it makes for this amazing drink that keeps you energized all day. Super! So talking to the, to the barista there in Brooklyn and he says they've got their own, he says they, they don't go with those beans. He was a little dismissive of uh, their proprietary process. He said, these toxins are really, they're just a mold that grows on green coffee beans. So if you're really careful with your suppliers, you're really careful with how you handle everything, he said, you know, you're gonna limit the amount of toxins you're gonna find on there. He said, plus roasting them gets rid of a lot. He said also, a caffeine is a natural mycotoxin blocker. So if there are toxins in your coffee, your, your caffeine is probably blocking most of it. But to combat that, they said they do have their own process. So they have strict control over their bean import. They then give their beans an alcohol bath, uh, which they then rinse, dry, roast, grind. I think they said four hours for degassing, which based on my experience probably makes sense because after three, I get foamy stuff. So four hours of degassing, grind it, it's into the coffee. So that takes care of your mycotoxins. As for the fat, they do something a little different and they have a farm in upstate New York that supplies them with fresh rendered duck fat. He said, obviously vegetarians are never gonna touch this drink, but for people who do enjoy chicken or duck or whatever, he said these fats are going to feel a little more natural to you. They're not gonna upset your stomach. It's gonna be something your body recognizes and knows how to deal with. So they take that, they brew the fresh coffee with, the, uh, with their special blend of spices. They wouldn't tell me what blend it was, but it smelled really good. They brew that all together, then they pop it into the blender with a scoop of the duck fat and boom, ch fried chicken coffee. So I've done my best here to replicate fried chicken coffee. I wanted to bring it back from Brooklyn. Nowhere in town serves it yet, 
but I'm hoping somebody might decide to take a chance on fried chicken coffee because I would love to see a professional version of this served somewhere in Calgary. I think it would be a big hit. So you saw my, how I put it together. The fats stay really well suspended. Like I've, this has been sitting for 10 minutes and the fats are still really well suspended in the liquid. They haven't clumped up or anything. It still smells so good. Like it smells like fried chicken and it smells like coffee. Mm. And it tastes real, like it tastes like fried chicken. And then like you get the, fr the front of the spice, then you get the creaminess of the fat, and then the back end of the bitter coffee. And oh man, like I feel awake, I feel alive, I feel good. Thank you Brooklyn for introducing me to fried chicken coffee. So if you are a Bulletproof Coffee fan, consider trying the fried chicken version. It, uh, it gives you everything that Bulletproof Coffee does with a little bit of a new flavor. Um, and you know what, it's, uh, it's clucking good. That's terrible, isn't it? But hey, it's not up to me to write the ad material because I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm just telling you my review. I'm reviewing McReview Face, fresh back from Brooklyn, and I'll see you next review.